Have you been looking to learn about creating spreadsheets or advancing your spreadsheet knowledge? Or wait, is it creating reports for school or the workplace? Or using functions and formulas to enhance your calculations? Or even gaining insight from your data? In this series of lessons, I'll be introducing you to Microsoft Excel, its functionalities and how to use it to accomplish this task. Please note that this is Excel for all, no matter your level of expertise, whether you're a beginner, an intermediary, or even an advanced learner. So let's go. Hey there, it's Nick here and welcome to the channel. Today's video focuses on the basics of Microsoft Excel and some common technologies. So if you are new to the channel, please subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below. Also hit on the bell icon to get notified when I post any new content. If you are an old subscriber, thank you for being part of the family. Now let's get to the PC and do some work. Welcome guys and let's begin with a brief introduction to Microsoft Excel. Excel is a spreadsheet application that allows users to organize their data or even create charts and graphs from their data. You can also produce professional looking reports for both the school and work project. It contains cells of data in rows and columns which we will discuss later in this video. Data in Excel can be both numeric values textual values or alphanumeric values which means you can have a combination of both alphabets and numbers in one cell. When it comes to knowing more about Microsoft Excel, I do have one of my favorite short clips which I will leave a link to it in the description below for you to watch. Let's go ahead and see how you can launch and use Microsoft Excel from your computer. If you have any of the Microsoft Office subscriptions, then you should have Microsoft Excel already installed on your computer. To launch Excel, go to your search bar on your Windows and simply type Excel and that should appear as part of your applications. When the Excel logo appears, click to open or simply hit on the enter button on your keyboard and wait for it to open. Once the program is successfully open, you should see a welcome window which looks similar to what you are seeing on the screen right now. The welcome window contains a number of tutorials and some custom templates already installed as part of the application. Clicking on more templates should show you a number of custom templates which could be used to create work or school schedules or sales invoice or even project timeline chart. In this video, we will not be using any of these custom templates, but we will go ahead and create a, an Excel workbook from scratch. So to do that, simply click on blank workbook and that should open up a new workspace for you. Before we do anything on our worksheet, let's see the distinction between a workbook and a worksheet. A workbook is a single Excel file or a spreadsheet that contains at least one worksheet. It looks just like a notebook that contains many sheets and more sheets can be added to it. A worksheet on the other hand is a single page inside a workbook and is made up of grid lines that form cells. A workspace is divided into sections and on the topmost part you can see the save button, you can also see the sheet name, you can also see the search bar which you can use to search anything in your workbook or you can use the shortcut alt Q to open up the search bar. At the far right, you see the minimize, maximize, and then the close buttons. Another part of the Excel worksheet is what we call the ribbon. And the ribbon basically contains tabs or pages. Each tab contains group of related commands or settings. The first tab is file. So when you click on file, you see things like home, which was where we were earlier on. You also see new, open, info, save, save us. And you can also see how to print um, your workbook. Clicking info to show you some basic information about your workbook, including how to protect your workbook, inspecting your workbook, managing the workbook or uh, browser view options. It also shows some properties uh, which shows the size of the workbook, the title, the date that the workbook was created, the date that the workbook was last printed and the name of the author and currently you can see that um, I am the author of this particular workbook. You can also click on show all properties to look at other hidden properties uh, in the workbook. We currently wouldn't do anything here so go ahead and click on the back button to take you back to uh, the next tab which is home. Under home we have a number of subcategories and the first group on the far left is your undo and redo buttons. You can also see the clip group which uh, contains things like the copy paste cuts and then the format painter. Next, you see the font uh, category, which has the font style or the font name, the font size, 
Uh, you can also use it to apply bold, italics, or even underline your text. You can also apply fill color and then font color in this category. Next is the alignment group and here we have the top alignment, the middle alignment and then the bottom alignment. You also have the left alignment, the center alignment and then the right alignment. You also have the increase and decrease uh, indents over here in this group. And another interesting functionality here is how to wrap a text or even merge and center your text which we will look at in you know other subsequent videos. Next we have the number group which has a number of formatting functions especially when you're dealing with uh, numbers. We also have the styles group which allows us to apply conditional formatting especially to tables and we will look at all of these in subsequent videos. One very interesting group under the home tab is the cells group and this is where you can insert cells or insert rows or columns or even insert a sheet. You can also delete cells over here or even delete rows or columns or even an entire sheet. And under formatting, you can customize the row height or column width or even protect your worksheet or lock a particular cell, which we will look at you know, in other videos to come. The next group I would like you guys to be familiar with is the editing group. And this is very useful, especially again when you are dealing more with numbers. And here you, you can see a number of custom functions. And uh, when you click on the drop down arrow here, you could see the auto sum, you can see the sum, you can see the average of your numbers, that, or you can even count your numbers. Clicking on more functions should show you more, more of these functions. And over here, you can search which particular function you would like to use. Let's now look at the worksheet window or the working area. And this contains cells in rows and columns. And you can see the columns named in alphabetical order and then the rows named in numbers. Again, on the worksheet window, we have the name box, which contains the cell address. So what's a cell address? Cell address refers to the specific location of a particular cell or of a particular data. So for example, if I click anywhere on this sheet, you will see that the address in the name box changes. So for example, if I click here, we could see that the name of this particular cell we've selected is cell D6 and how does the naming convention goes? The naming convention is created by looking at the intersection between the column and then the row. We also have the formula bar which shows the formula that is entered in a particular cell. For example, for example if I type the formula equal to 2 plus 2 and hit enter and now go back and click on the answer you will see that in the formula bar it has shown us the formula that we typed uh, in the cell so that is what the formula bar does and note that the formula in excel begins with an equal sign i'll make a separate video about this explaining more about functions and formulas let's now go ahead and clear this output and then enter some data Okay guys, I fast forwarded this part of the lesson just to save some time. Now we can see our data neatly typed on our workspace. Once your work is completed, go ahead and save it in order not to lose your workbook. So to save a workbook, simply click on file and then you can save it or you can save it as, but we will do the save. So click on save and select the location that you would like to save it, whether online or you want to save it to your PC. For easy identification, be sure to name your workbook by clicking on the name box up here. You can see that the location of this notebook will be in my document. So let's click on save. And that should have it saved for us. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share with others. Also, let's get interactive by dropping your comments in the comment box below and following us on both Facebook and Instagram. See you in the next video.